Israel was in captivity. No, ero Israel nai ngan ha no chou nam jin kan ya de. Armies were controlling what was happening in Israel. No, Israel nai ngan ma pian ni de ya de ko sit da de ga tin chou de. God would come and restore their freedom. Ero God would remove the military control over their lives. God would liberate them. Moses was told, "Bring the people out." And then bring them in. He brought the people out. But then he lost his temper. He got angry. The people did not believe God. They did not trust God. They thought God just brought us here to destroy us. And so the part about going in did not happen for them. So I don't feel comfortable just reading or hearing a prophecy. But Daniel taught us something very special. He says in Daniel 9 chapter 2, I prayed to the Lord. I made my confession. And then he went and confessed sin. Not that he had committed. But that his nation had committed. He apologized to God. For the idolatry. For all the idols. For all the evil, for all the sin. And as he approached God, and as he pressed in and set himself to God, and he asked God for forgiveness, we're in this spiritual world. It's very different from Job. Job, Job is pretty much ignorant of what is happening spiritually. Wide open. And your eyes, your eyes are wide open. You're, you're operating in a completely different realm. Gabriel is trying to bring the message to Daniel. The, the prince of Persia is trying to stop him. So then Michael comes in and bashes the prince of Persia. He, he does some mixed, says in verse 23 of chapter 9, at the beginning of your supplication. So we have the word of God. We prayer and fasting. And then there is angelic warfare. God gives the commandment. But then there are princes that are trying to stop that command from, from coming. But as we continue to pray and stand our ground, the righteousness of God prevails. The answer comes. Hallelujah. It says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Mighty through God. Hold down strongholds. Only then does it tell us 
to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might to put on the whole armor of God we do not fight against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers and the rulers of the darkness of this world in heavenly places we are exercising spiritual gifts. Now, this is not just over a country. This could be right in your workplace. Imagine if Joseph had these things. His boss's wife tried to come after him. What if he could have said, Madam, uh, let me talk to you a little later. And he went over here and he said, God, I come before you. In the name of the Messiah. I break the power of that spirit of lust on that woman. I curse that spirit from off of her. I take authority. There will be holiness in this house. There will be holiness in that marriage. Hallelujah. And then he knows it's done. And then he sees that lady later. She says, um, I'm sorry about how I acted uh, earlier. God is going to use spiritual warfare in your workplace, in your family life. You're going to put your hand on the pillow of a husband or wife who's resisting the gospel. Somebody who has drug problems. And I believe that the spiritual warfare that you're going to be part of is going to have an impact on Myanmar. From this distance. And it's going to touch Malaysia as well. Could you show the other?